steep fjords, small fishing villages and the region with the sunniest weather in the country. Doesn't that sound inviting? Welcome to Iceland's East Fjords and our journey to their best spots. Hello everyone, we are leaving Lake Mühvarten today and the Mühvarten area because we continue our ride and our circumnavigation of Iceland and our next big destination is the East Fjords or are the East Fjords? And I'm actually not completely sure uh, we will make it there today, so we will see. After all the 6 a.m. mornings the previous days, we had decided to leave Mühvatten a bit later. And so we found ourselves on the road again at about 11 to head further east, direction to the East Fjords. We actually got a little bit inspired by our route yesterday and we saw a stretch yesterday that we actually didn't think about before but where we realized yesterday that we could take it instead of staying on the big and in our opinion a bit boring ring road. So if you watched our Askia adventure, you will know the place that we are going to now. We are at the Fjalla Cafe again, which you probably know from yesterday. This is where we filled up the tires before we went home from Askia. And we asked here again if they have a room, but unfortunately they don't. I think it's one of the most pretty places that we have seen so far. I would have loved to stay here. So we were unlucky here with the room. <laughs> we have to continue to this only option that we made a reservation at now. We were back in Fjalla Duro, in Modru Dalu, which is the highest settlement in the whole country and located on the edge of the northern highlands. Fjalladuro has been an active farm since the settlement period. Now there is also accommodation, a beautiful cafe and restaurant and campground. At Fjalla Cafe, all products are freshly made and materials from the own farm are used as much as it's possible. Guests can unwind while enjoying traditional delicacies. For a quick bite, you can try some of the local pastries such as the Kleiner, the Icelandic twisted donut, or waffles with cream. If you are feeling more for something warming, the traditional Kjötsuppa, the lamb soup, is one of the Icelandic traditions. Each family has its own recipe for the soup, and Fjalla Kaffee, of course, has their own secret ingredient, and the meat in the soup is local. So, this is, I guess, the second breakfast? Keeping up our own tradition, we of course went with sharing a waffle while watching the puppy and the small goat of the farm secretly running the place. <laughs> we are leaving Mühwarten today and <laughs> we have a little problem because we really can't find any accommodation. It's a weekend, everything is booked and <laughs> found. I think in a distance of like two to three hundred kilometers, there was exactly one place left. We booked it. Uh, it's a single room where they put a mattress, mattress on the floor. And um, yeah, that's how booked everything is. Okay. 
on the road again and we're heading to this only room we could find basically on the whole east coast of Iceland and um, part of this road here where we already went yesterday in the end of the Asker journey and we liked it so much that we wanted to do it again today because we realized it goes even further than crossing to Asker with the F905 and um, it's a super alternative to the paved and much more busy ring road. The road that nowadays has the number 901 and goes by the settlement Murdrudalur and the Fjalla Café once used to be Iceland's ring road. The road was moved to its current route north of Motrudalur though, and since then the still existing old road got the number 901 instead of 1. It's absolutely beautiful here between all these mountains and rocks and kind of like black volcanic sand. This is absolutely stunning. It's such a dramatic landscape with all these black stones and the sand. Um, I think it nearly looks a bit hostile with these dark clouds that you see here. I mean, it's not the best sunny weather, um, but the road is actually a fantastic ride and a lot of fun because it's super easy and super well maintained. Uh, really such a good idea to take this road instead of the ring road. All of you guys who travel here should go here. We are back on the ring road now. Uh, our hotel is not so far, so a rather short day of riding um, because there were no other hotels in a further distance. But I really hope that we'll find something a bit more interesting to stay tomorrow. Um, we will see. Maybe a big surprise awaits us, but this accommodation that's coming up now, we really will see. I'm not having high hopes. In the Yes, finding accommodation was a big issue since we started our trip in Iceland. But on this day, the lack of free rooms or places to stay and the room we had to take in the end because there was simply no other choice became nearly ridiculous. And now, i show you the biggest room. Yep, that's about it. The view is very nice. But there is not much space <laughs> and all of our gear is here and here. Shared bathrooms. We paid 250 euros for this room. The only other available accommodation within the 300 km radius was by the way this bargain. A pitch tent for 148 euros. And no, I'm not talking about glamping, but a simple pitched tent. Today we're going to kind of another fjord, but to an off-road stretch here on the east coast. So that will be the first time we see the east coast. It's not going to be a long day, but I think the ride will be super nice. Mm. 
Good morning everyone. It's another lovely day and hopefully another lovely day of riding. Uh, weather is very very nice. I hope it stays like this because the place where we are going is supposed to have spectacular views at least if I can believe the people who told me about it. So be prepared. Little did we know that there would not be much of a view on this day. But the riding took us further east, to be precise to some of the most eastern fjords of Iceland. The East Fjords of Iceland is a 120 km or 75 mile stretch of coastline. Out of the country's total population of 335,000 people, only an estimated 3% live in the east of Iceland. Now we arrived at the east coast and we're gonna go over there and I think there the gravel road will start and the gravel road takes us along the coast but as well over a mountain. So very curious about this ride. Gravel, here we come. I'm only a bit worried about the clouds now. Do you see these mountains are kind of covered in clouds on the top? Uh, I really hope they will not um, be there when we arrive at our mountain pass because that might take away all of our view. We will see, fingers crossed. Route 917 leads to the summit of Helis Heidi Eistri, a mountain pass at an elevation of 644 meters above sea level. It was one of the roads I was indeed looking most forward to, because friends had recommended the route as a super nice scenic ride, without too many other tourists, but instead with amazing views. So I guess I don't really have to tell you guys the bad news, but as you can see, we are riding right into the fog. Um, what a pity. I really hope it clears up or maybe we get high enough so we can leave the fog behind us. Um, I really hope that we can enjoy the views at one point, but obviously not now. Route 917 is called Hildavegur and one of the highest and the steepest road in all of Iceland. It might not sound too crazy to people who are used to riding the Alps, but it's said to be the steepest mountain road in the country, with some parts up to 15%. You know, I of course can't really judge how this road would be without the fog, but even with the fog, I think this is spectacular. Uh, it feels very mystical and what you can see, like, you know, the little stones and um, the mountain and so on, it looks really, really beautiful, even the fog. So I guess it's even more beautiful without, but it's still a beautiful ride, even with the fog. The pass is mostly gravel and located on the route between Road 85 and the Ring Road, with lots of tight switchback bends, curves and high drop-offs. And when we rode down the pass again, we finally got a glimpse of the stunning views that everybody had been talking about. Wow, these crazy views on the ocean. What a beautiful ride this last part has been. Um, 
if there's good weather, I'm sure this whole route is nothing but breathtaking. So I really can highly recommend it because also the riding was pretty much fun actually. What an absolutely stunning view here with the black beaches on the crystal clear blue ocean. Absolutely stunning here. From here it's about another 35 kilometers until we are back on route number one, the ring road. And um, yeah, this is kind of like a gravel highway, really fast you can drive here, it's super good and super well maintained. And yeah, I think this will lead all the way until we hit tarmac again with ring road. On the way we stopped another time to check the available hotels and accommodations in the area. And we found a hotel in a little town that had been the hotspot of our music festivals for the last few days. Unlike yesterday, I think today we hit a jackpot with our accommodation. I'm actually very excited. And we're going to a small town that has a super famous music festival going on there at the moment. Um, but today is actually the last day. So people are departing and we luckily just found a free room there. And I'm a bit sad that we can't attend the festival and that it's over when we arrive. But indeed, I'm too excited to see the town. And um, yeah, I think there are a lot of things that can be explored there. I didn't know at that point how right I was, but the remote town of Pakagerdi, with only around 100 inhabitants, was indeed one of the best decisions we had made in the last days. Yes, the next episode will start right where this episode ended, in the town Pakagerdi. And it is believed that the Queen of the Elves of East Iceland resides right next to the little town. Tune in next Thursday to visit Iceland's supernatural beings, its famous puffins and to join a ride to one of our favorite places of the whole trip. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to leave a comment if you enjoyed the ride or if you are also a waffle lover. <laughs>